Jazz, how are you doing? 97 on the box, Young Jazz here. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Are you still in New York? No, I'm back in Atlanta. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. I was there long enough. <laughs> how was how was Fashion Week and everything? Because like, you know, you're it so was, into fashion. And I saw that. It was amazing. I had so much fun there. I kept telling like my team, like I never felt so just in place. Like I had a great time. It was amazing. I walked, I sat front row at a lot of different shows. I was dressed by a couple shows. It was amazing. So is that something that you like always wanted to do or was it kind of like random? Um, I feel like it was, I've always been into fashion, but like, as I grew, I learned more about like the fashion industry and like things that go on within, you know, the fashion industry. So yeah, that's when it became something that I wanted to do. Can you give us a fashion insider? What goes on in the industry for real? Cause I don't even know. <laughs> it's not that easy to like, <laughs> Well, no, actually, it's pretty easy to get in these rooms. Like, I thought it was a little harder, you know, because, like, my last fashion week, that this is only my, it was only my second one. So the first one I went to, like, I didn't really attend a lot of different shows. So, like, I didn't really know how I work and, you know, what you got to do to attend. And then this one coming up, I was like, well, damn, am I going to get in any shows? Like, is he going to, did it happen? And then, like, as soon as I got there, I was approved, like, 10 shows. It's, like, what? easy. You know, all it is is about reaching out and just, you know, making that connect. That's dope. Okay, so I have this game. Unfortunately, we're not together right now. We doing. I feel like we're back in COVID. But when you come to Houston, we'll have to tap in again. But I have this game called the Juice Box. So basically, like you pick a topic and then you tell us how you feel about it. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. First one: shooting your shot. Do you ever shoot your shot? Um. Have I ever shot my shot? No. Damn, there's never in your whole life. <laughs> I feel like. I feel like. No, actually. I did one time when I was in high school, I told my cousin to tell this guy, like, well, to give him my number. So I guess yeah. that was shooting my shot. Okay. But yeah. now you want to shoot your shot? Yeah, no, I feel like it's a man's job. Mm -mm. What about, what if you see him, but he don't see you? You're like, that don't happen. I mean, I would shoot my shot in a way of like, okay, I might follow you on Instagram or I might like a picture, but you're going to have to like <laughs> do the slide and you know what I'm saying? So it's going to be have to be a team effort. Okay. Whenever somebody does shoot their shot, like, What's the kind of approach that you like? You like be like, when is our first date? Or like subtle, get to know you more? I mean, we can just chill, like get to know each other. Like, I don't like all that. Oh, yeah. So when we going out? Because mm. I, I really don't want to go out with you just yet. Like, let's get to know each other. Let's like, you know, who are you? What's your name? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I don't be on no like rush tip. Like, oh, we got to got to just he, he can't just ask me what I'm doing. Like, oh, we got to have a date set up. Like, no, let's chill. Let it happen organically. You okay. Know? Um, what about what about couple goals? Is there any couple that you always be like, yeah, that's the kind of vibe I want to be on eventually? Um, honestly, no, because you don't know what these people be going through behind closed doors. So We've been saying Will and Jada for years and years and be like, hold on. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't really know. They might pop out and God forbid, divorce tomorrow. Like, you just never know. So I just don't really you create, you create your own goals for the relationship, right? Create your own goals, yeah. Thanks. Um, what about what's your favorite brand? My favorite brand would probably be besides your own. I love R13 too. R13. Okay, bet. I've never heard of R13. Yeah. Autolinger. Autolinger got a lot of like dope creative pieces. Like it, they're very unique. So I think Autolinger would be my favorite. Where are they based out of? I don't know where they based at. Mm -hmm. No idea where they're based at, but like look them up on Instagram. They're super dope. Okay. So you've always been into fashion and stuff since like high school before? I feel like unknowingly I have, but like as I mature, as I grew up, like I learned more about it. That made me like tap more into it. But like since I was a little girl, I've always did things like outside of the box. Like with my uniform, I was always doing something that the other girls wasn't doing at school because I just dress for me. Like I dress what makes me, I dress in what make me feel comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So like as I got older, I seen that with my stylist Naya, mm -hmm. and like. We just kind of like bounce ideas off of each other and just kind of like learn from each other and just grew from there. And it just made me like fall in love with it even more. The fits are always so hard, Des. I'd be like, where can we get it? What's going on? Where's the Depop page? Something. Yeah. No, we're speaking about. Go ahead. No, I was about to say, I, I'm going to do an annual like closet sale, like probably twice a year. I think it I saw you do that last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you do that in Atlanta? Mm hmm. Yeah. So it was just all clothes, like you didn't want no more? It was just clothes. I do still want, but yeah. I had to like let go of, because it's like, okay, I obviously just don't need this no more. Do you ever wear the same thing twice? Yeah. Hey, so this shit gonna get worn twice. 
<laughs> okay, what about after twice? Nah, I feel like mm. it just depends. Like, okay, now I I ain't like taking pictures in it a whole bunch of more times, but I'm definitely gonna wear it twice. What's it's your outfit? Morning. What's it? What's the outfit for you for a first date? Does it depend where you're going? It depends where I'm going, but honestly, like first date. My go-to would probably just be like a chill, comfortable streetwear look. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really like to go too, too sexy on them off rip. Like, I like to more so be comfortable. So, like, I would probably put on, like, this swaggy-ass streetwear look with a heel or, like, a stiletto or even a tennis shoe. So, okay, okay. Does that mean no sex on the first date? If the vibe right. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Vibe okay. right. <laughs> anything can happen what do you feel okay this has been this has been coming out the juice box a lot lady days it's not just for you i'm not trying to you know but how do you feel about threesomes i honestly i'm not into threesomes i'm too possessive like uh, i could not sit and watch my partner have sex with somebody else like i kudos to the girls that can but i'll be ready to kill somebody not like, for you okay see, my whole vibe. i feel you i haven't done it yet but i feel like i would but every time i ask somebody they'd be like no nah, i'm not trying to share I actually just know a lot of people that say they would, but like me, I just can't. I don't know. It would have to be, a, I feel like it would have to be a lit night and it would have to be like your choice. Yeah, like even if it's a lit night, I feel like just knowing me, I would wake up the next day just pissed off. Like I would be so mad. I'd be ready to break up with you. Like I'd be mad, like disgusted. Like what the fuck? Dude. Okay, Des, now we got to talk about the music and everything too. Because I know you've been doing it for a long time. So when did you first get started for those who don't know? Well, I first started doing music when I was young, like 13 years old, and we had a, a rap group, but I stopped and like I tapped more back into it around 2019, mm -hmm. I want to say. You stopped and for all that when time. I, like, mm -hmm. You stopped for all that time and you never did like nothing? No I mean, I used to play with it. Like I used to do like freestyle videos, like because honestly, I never see myself actually pursuing it as my career. So like I used to play with it, do like freestyle videos and stuff like that. And then my dad was like, you need to take this serious like you you good at it but I just never really seen it for me but it's something that I always know how to do like I grew up around music my older cousin is Chingy so yeah like once I tapped back into it like I fell in love with just like the process of becoming an artist and like artist development mm -hmm. and yeah you started back with it like 2019 what about whenever everything was shut down in 2020 like were you I mean I know you dropped and stuff but was it did you feel like what were you up to Quarantine was my favorite like time of what? Yeah. How come? I feel like I learned so much about myself. Like we were forced to just sit in the house, like you know, and when you just sit in, it's like you can either choose to go crazy or just like tap in. I chose to like really tap in to like everything I had going on. Like I got more creative. Like I feel like I broke down barriers for myself because I just really like made things happen. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, and that all came with just time, like time I had to myself. So yeah, I dropped. I was in the studio, like just me by myself, like just in the studio, like all night. Like it's it, it's a lot because for a female, you know, you always feel like you need that one friend with you or that one person with you. But like, no, I was really like locked in on another level, like by myself. Mm -hmm. And we shot Talk to Me, the a big ass music video during quarantine. And it just really like showed me how much power I had. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like showed me like what I was, not power, I want to say, but like show me what I was capable of. So yeah. like, yeah, what I could do. So yeah, it just inspired me to like go harder and just like continue on to what I was doing. That's dope. So what's your process like in the studio? You just go in there and vibe and like, you know. Yeah, I used to like kind of like prep my songs before I went in. Like even if I didn't have a beat, if I did, like I would just prep a song. I said, I'm gonna start back doing that. But like lately I just would go in the studio and just let whatever vibe just vibe, you know? Like I like when beats talk to me. Like I feel a beat so good like to the point where I could just go in the booth and like I'm gonna just talk off the top of my head and we just gonna put this all together but yeah that's like my process lately Ooh, okay so how many beats you be going through you be going through like a hundred before you find one you be like no nah, like every 10 um I want to say every 10 okay yeah because like if you try to listen to like a hundred beats you might kind of overthink it overlook a, a brilliant beat so like I like to like keep going through the same five and if those five ain't hitting then I'll go through another five and it's gonna be one within those ten have you ever overlooked a beat and then went back to it? Definitely. Yeah, I've even, like, started songs on a beat and, like, stopped and didn't go back to it until, like, a month. Ooh, okay. Yeah. How do you feel about spinning the block in general, then? <laughs> I'm weak. <laughs> it ain't nothing wrong with spinning the block, you know. Everybody what? got to spin the block. <laughs> what? Okay, what are the terms for spinning the block? Like, like does it, if you end on good terms, then it's like, okay, like, if timing is right, we connect again. 
yeah, like if we end on good terms, it we can spend a block, you know, or <laughs> if we end on terms with good times, we can spend a block if it ain't no bad blood. If you ain't like violate, mm-hmm. if you violate it, then it's dead for you. Yeah, it's dead. Okay, let's talk about music that you grew up listening to and stuff too. Who are some artists that you've been on since like you were younger? Of course, Nicki Minaj. I've always listened to Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne, Drake, Future, uh, Rich Homie Kwan, mm-hmm. like Lucci, a whole bunch of different people. And now you're working with like Trina and all that stuff. Like how crazy is that for you that you, you know, because I mean, I grew up listening to Trina. So I'm like, damn, right. how did that come about? Um, well, I love Trina. Me and Trina always like connect on the socials and stuff. So like one day my manager, he let me hear this sample beat of her song Nanho. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit, like, you know, and it's one of those beats that spoke to me. So like, I just vibe with it. And then once the song was actually like finished, which I didn't even finish that song for like a month. That was one of them songs. Like I started and then like went back in and like, cause you know, yeah, it gotta be right. But so yeah, then once I did that and I'm like, this is, I'm like, this one of them songs, like this one of them records I had told my team, like, no, this need to be my lead single for my project. Like oh. we got to go all in with this. Like, I just felt so good about it. I reached out to Trina, like, I would love to, for you to be a part of this video. Like, and she just was like, yeah, like Trina is like one of the most supportive people that I know within this industry that I've met so far. Like she's so supportive. Like I love her. She's so That's supportive and genuine. That's why. Is there, has there been anybody because I mean you be with everybody but like is there anybody that you ever been like geek to me or somebody like like Beyonce have you met Beyonce I have not met Beyonce okay okay, okay I would okay. love to be Beyonce I would love to be Beyonce one person that I feel like I met and I was kind of like whoa what the hell I just met them <laughs> would probably be I was a huge Chris Brown fan. Well, I am a huge Chris Brown fan. Like I've been a fan since yeah. I was younger and I seen him in concert. So like, that's close enough. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, yeah, but like I seen him in concert. I can't think of nobody. Like I, I met so many people, but like somebody that I probably was like, oh my God, like I was such a, I'm such a fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would probably be. Oh, I met Kamora Lee at a fashion oh. show this past week. That's that was good. like money. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, what about people like uh, anybody that you want to work with in particular, like for your next project or upcoming? I would love to work with Janae. I've been saying this for so long. I would love, 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 love to work with Janae. What? That should happen. That's the girls happen. want it. We want that. Yeah, time. it's gonna happen. Um, speaking of the girls and stuff too, how long have you and Jada been cool? Like, how did y'all first meet? For people who don't know, me and Jada met when we were in middle school. I think I was like twelve. That's crazy. Eleven, yeah. And we both lived in Savannah. And I think Jada had posted like, "Oh, I want to start a rap group." Mm-hmm. and I'm like oh yeah let's do it like let's do it we're just you know we the eight girls pretty girls whatever the girls link up <laughs> right and, and there, like it was four of us in the group and like me and Janet Jada connection like that's like my soul sister so like we just connected since we was young on a deeper level like that really nobody can really understand and yeah, yeah just traveling on to now but our parents <laughs> like, always instilled in us like don't ever do no fake shit towards each other like just you know what I'm saying like we they treated us like we was blood mm-hmm. and their you know parents are cool too yeah they're right cool we all a family so okay wait and when did you first start vlogging too I know you do so many different things I'm jumping all over the place I <laughs> literally do so many different things you do yeah I started vlogging I want to say it was a little before quarantine it was a little before quarantine. Yeah, like I started like just documenting the process of my artistry. I don't know if I took those YouTube videos down, but like I started like just, you know, showing a journey of like my everyday. And I used to be by myself like a lot. I mean, I used to be with my friends, but like as far as like doing my music and like doing stuff like for my career, I used to be by myself a lot. So like I used to just vlog, put my camera in the car, talk to the camera. So yeah, I want to say that was probably like 2020, 2019. So was it because you were starting doing music that you kind of like start getting into vlogging and stuff too? I feel like I started getting to no, I, I'm I'm lying. Oh my yeah, god, you're lying! I was like, you've been vlogging. I've been vlogging. Yeah, I started doing like hair reviews and like all type of stuff on YouTube like a, a minute ago. Damn, I forgot <laughs> about that. I I think I started getting into that when I realized like it's money on YouTube, right? So like, let me tap in, and then I just started like using that as a way to connect with my supporters and stuff. That makes sense. Speaking yeah. of money, what's the most rich bitch shit that you like ever did? Bought my own car, period. Oh, no, you said, you know what else? 
you gotta give me another one. Well, that was like the most rich bitch shit. Uh, I feel like what about another like another thing I would say was just like me being put in a position, like put myself in the in the position to like hire people on my team and actually like pay them. Mm-hmm. So like that's some rich bitch shit. That, that is. And what made you start your own company too? It's called Show Love, right? No, it's Big Dust Entertainment. Show Love is like what I started with with my dad. Like that's what I would release my music through. Oh. But like now it's just, you know, Big Dust Entertainment. And uh, what made me start doing it is realizing yeah. I couldn't do everything by myself. Like I actually do need an assistant. I need a manager. I need a name. I, I need people on my team. Like I need a PR. So it's like when you need these things, you got to pay people. So instead of like looking at it like, damn, I can't afford this. I just found a way to make it happen because I knew it's something that I need. Big girl moves, like you said. Yeah, big, big girl moves. moves. Okay, yeah. are y'all hiring? That's the real question. <laughs> we, we always hiring. We always what? need to on a team. <laughs> Who does all your vlogs? My uh, videographer, her name is Tay. Okay. I can see her in here. Uh, dang, hold up. Are they, are they doing this? Uh, wait, decline. Okay, my bad, sorry. <laughs> um... Okay, wait. Oh, we got to talk about Stone Cold, of course. When did y'all, like, what was, do you remember, like, the day, like, y'all made the song and stuff? What was that like? We made the song, I think it was, like, March. It was early in the year of 2022, and it just happened real organically. Like, we didn't plan it. We didn't, like, start writing for it. We, it was no preparation for the song. Like, we was just out one random night and wanted to go to the studio. Like, we was super little, like, 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and, excuse me, after the club, we had just went to the studio. Lit is on, like, I... I Hella emphasis on the lit because I remember being in a booth like, oh my God, y'all, I don't think I can record. But like, why? why? I was so lit. Like, we was lit. Like, it was crazy. And when we finished, like, that night, we finished at, like, 8 a.m. And, like, just playing a song over and over again, back to back, it was just amazing. Like, I could not believe it. But, like, I feel like the best things happen organically, like, with everything in my life. You said y'all finished at 8 a.m.? Yeah, we finished at, like, 8 a.m. Cause you said night that's the next day the morning what yeah we started at five like 5 a.m and mm-hmm. we finished at like 8 a.m i don't think i got home till like nine that morning okay who came up with well 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 mariah came up with well 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 okay and when she did went you in first and lay her piece and we was like okay we should go back and forth like talk to each other kind of yeah. so like she went in first and then i went in after her and then we had we was like going back and forth on the whole song but then we like split it into verses oh but yeah, she came up with the well, well, well. We love that. Okay, bet. Well, because when was the first time that you started seeing like the song go crazy? Was it on TikTok? I feel like it was on Twitter. Twitter first. I feel like Twitter and then TikTok. Maybe I'm. I may have been late to TikTok, but like mm-hmm. me, I seen it on Twitter first because I posted it on my story the next day, and like it immediately got reposted to Twitter, and like it had a hello, hello retweets and stuff. And then, like, somehow Mariah posted a snippet, and then they, like, pieced the whole song together, and they, like, had the whole <laughs> song before we even released it. It was crazy. So when's the video drop in? Uh, right now, we don't really have no expectations on a video, but, like, maybe soon. Look, you said that, like, just Like, what you mean? Yeah, like, you know, simple, you know, go out. We're both doing so many, like, different things right now. Like, I think she's working on a project. So whenever the time is right, whenever the line, we're going to get it done, you know? Mm-hmm. and we got to talk about your last project raw too well how did you come up with why did you decide to just go with the name raw because I feel like it just explained like it was a little summary just of like my life for that past year like I felt like I'm just you know shedding skin like I'm just putting everything on the table being my most vulnerable self and the best explanation for that would be raw and like it was crazy because what made raw like really really click to me is my friend said it all the time like oh that's raw that's raw so like I just applied it to another meaning and you know it was like okay I'm just giving it to people raw like I'm just putting it all on the table that's dope and so what what would you say is the maybe like a word to summarize how this year started off for you or like what you want for this year standing on business business that is what we starting this year off with I did a move board a very very detailed move board and overall the move board was just like in different aspects of my life but like to summarize everything is just like I'm handling business like I'm standing on business like no procrastinations I'm letting go of bad habits like I'm making like changes within my life for the better what's one of your bad habits one of my bad habits is procrastination like laziness so like I'm letting that go same how do you balance everything though like literally like fashion vlogging film music like is every day just different or what 
I like to like try to tie it in and make it just feel like natural. So I don't really have to think about like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to give time for this. I got to give time for this. Like, even though I am like spreading myself between so many different things, like I just get it done. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it all, I feel like they all play on each other. So. Do you have some more music on the way too? I know you just dropped the end of last year, but still, you know, just trying yeah. to see. I ain't gonna lie. I took like a little mental break with being in the studio. Cause I just had to like take a step back, like regroup. And just like kind of go back into like planning mode for like what's next for me and like what do I want for myself and just like my goals and stuff. So I haven't been in the studio yet since like the top of the year, but I am going to tap back in. What about tour? Tour is coming up, but I, I tomorrow, we're actually going to release it tomorrow. So Bye. yeah, so yeah, stay on the lookout for that. Okay, so the dates are coming out tomorrow or on sale tomorrow? The dates are coming out tomorrow. Are you coming to Houston? I don't think Houston on there, but it might be, it might, I don't think so though. Nowhere in Texas? He's going to Dallas. Well, bro, nobody, Dallas, but right here. Come see. they are not live in Houston. What do you mean? I know, but, now, I'm, now I'm salty. I thought you was going to come to the city. What? I know, I know, but yeah. Do you think you're going to add on dates or not? Mm, I'm actually a part of the tour, so I don't, I don't know if they're going to add on dates. Okay, got you, got you. Is this going to be your first tour or not? Wow, congratulations. That's awesome. What wait, oh, it's not your tour. So wait, what's the name of it? Yeah, I don't see tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it, y'all. I tried it one last time. And Des, before I let you go to, because I'll be in Atlanta all the time. And people will be like, go to American Deli, go to wherever. What do you think has the best food for real? Um, I feel like the best food right now for me, because I'll be bouncing around Atlanta. American Deli is good, but I like this place called Osha Thai. What's that? Yeah, it's like Osha. um it's a Thai food restaurant. It's really, mm. yeah. Okay, American Deli wings be this big. Ain't no way. Y'all like them big wings. I feel like the small wings is like Atlanta thing. No. It, Maybe them. that's why I'm not hip to it because usually I'm used to them being big, but they were still good. They were still fire. Yeah, they so good. Damn, Des. Well, it was very nice virtually meeting you. I cannot believe you're not coming to Houston, though. I don't even know. I'm like, no, no, if we go, if we always don't talk back. You should, um, you should just do a club while you're in Dallas, like on your way or whatever. For sure. Yeah, that's what we're going to do for sure. That's what I'm saying. I might be out there. We don't really know yet. Okay, fingers crossed that you come to Houston very, very soon. When you do, you have to come into the radio station and stuff. This is my house, so we'll yes. have to get in. But thank you so much for taking the time out and doing everything today. And I wish you luck on everything. And congratulations on the tour, too. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too.